Hi, and welcome to another edition of MasterVisualStudio.net. My name is Jeff Daniels, and today we'll be continuing along our Up and Running with Microsoft Azure website episodes, and we'll be focusing on configuring HTTPS for your Azure website. So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what you'll need uh, to bring to this and then what we'll cover. So as far as what you'll need, you'll want to have an existing website on Microsoft Azure. Now, if you need help setting that up, please take a look at our previous video as far as creating and publishing a site up to Azure. It's get you up there really quick. Uh, the second thing you're going to need is your custom domain configured for your Azure website. In order to use your own custom SSL, you need to have your own domain name assigned to your Azure website. Also, you can look at our previous video on how to do that if you need some help. And finally, your SSL certificate. So this is what we're going to want to upload to the site in order to uh, have your site now use that SSL certificate. Now, if you don't have one from a domain authority, um, we're going to walk you through how to create a self-signed one that's free, and we can upload and use that for testing on Azure. Now, what we're going to do today is first look at prerequisites for SSL on Microsoft Azure. What do you need to do on your site? Uh, kind of what do you get out of the box? And then we're going to take a look at generating a self-signed SSL certificate using the Make Cert utility. Uh, we'll take that SSL certificate, upload it to Azure, and then we'll update our website to use those SSL certificates. So that being said, let's jump over, take a look at Azure, and then we'll generate some certificates. All right, so here we are in the Microsoft Azure Management Portal. And there's a couple things we want to take a look at and go over prior to setting up the SSL real quick. And that's how the site starts off um, once you've assigned your custom domains like we have. So we've assigned two custom domain names to this site. We have one, the naked domain of mastervs.com, and the second is www.mastervs.com. We've done that in the previous video, so if you want to see how to do that, just jump over there and then come on back. So we've got those two domain names. And when we come in here, we'll see if we navigate over to, this is the Azure assigned URL. So there's our, there's our website name followed by azurewebsites.net. And out of the box, if you look, if we go to HTTPS, it does provide for all the different hosting plans, basic, shared, um, even the free and the standard, all four of those out of the box get HTTPS if you're using your azurewebsites.net domain URL. Um, the way they do, they've done that is, if you're not familiar with it, it's called a wildcard SSL. Uh, it's basically registered to asterisk.azurewebsites.net. So any subdomain underneath that is supported for SSL. So that's how it is out of the box. However, if we go to mastervs.com, which is one of the websites that we have registered here, and you'll see this is the HTTP. If we go to the HTTPS, you'll see there's nothing there. So we haven't, it won't cover us for the master VS, the naked domain name. Um, however, something interesting here is that if you do go to the www, it'll give you a certificate error. However, it will actually try to use the azurewebsites.net certificate. So if we go in there and take a look at that, you'll see even though we're at an entirely different domain, Azure is still trying to use that website or that SSL that was assigned to star.azurewebsites.net. So now in order for us to be able to assign our own SSL certificate to the site, there's a few things we need to do. If we go over to the uh, scale tab, you'll see we're currently on the shared plan. And we moved from the, sh from the free to the shared when we wanted to use our own custom domain names. And now we're gonna have to move to either basic or standard to be able to use our own SSL certificates. So in this case, we'll choose basic, and then we'll save that change. And it asks us, just confirms that we want to move to this different plan. We'll say that we do. Now, us on top of just getting the SSL uh, certificates, you do get some other features too. You get auto scaling. If we take a look down here, you get to choose the type of machine you're on. Because uh, now you're going from a shared hosting environment where you really could be shuffled or, um, from machine to machine and really grouped in with uh, a number of other sites from other customers to in this case, now you're getting your own uh, virtual host here. So you're, you're picking the type of host you want and how much you want to scale it, but more on that another day. So we've got our basic plan and now we're going to need to go over to configure because there's a couple pieces of information over there that are pertinent to what we want to do today. There's 
first one is the SSL bindings, and the second one is uh, uploading or assigning certificates to websites. So let's first let's make sure that our plan upgraded okay. It did. So we'll scroll down. So the first piece is your certificates. So this is where you're going to upload your SSL certificates for your website. And then down here for SSL bindings is where you'll assign those certificates to the particular domain names that you've got on your site. So before we can do that, we need to go over and we're going to create uh, some self-signed certificates. You may already have some from a domain authority. And if you do, that's great. You can skip this next step. But in case you need one for testing, we're going to go out and jump over to the Visual Studio command prompt and generate a couple self-signed certificates. So we'll see you there. OK, we're at the Visual Studio command prompt, and we're going to uh, knock off a couple quick um, self-signed certificates. So the first thing we want to do is create a certificate for the domain name of mastervs.com. Um, so in order to do that, so we're going to go ahead and use the make cert command. So we'll say make cert, and we will mark this as a self-signed certificate, which is what that R does. We'll make it. Uh, exportable, including the private key. We'll give it a the name that we want for the certificate is going to be the mastervs.com, and we'll want to use the SHA1 algorithm. Uh, we're looking for a length of 2048 bytes, and we want this stored in my um, my current user's certificate store. And the last thing we want to do, and this is um, this is why I use make cert instead of the IIS to create a self-signed certificate, is that you need to add this in on the end, or else uh, Windows Azure really won't will complain and not, not allow you to assign this certificate to one of the hosted sites unless you include this from what I've seen. So if we go in and put in this setting, which is, just bear with me, 1.5.5.7.3.1, if you put that in. So now, once we call make cert on this, this will generate a self-signed certificate and put it into our personal uh, certificate storage. So there we go. We've got the first one. Now what that's going to do is that'll give us a uh, certificate for our naked domain name, mastervs.com. What it won't do is cover us for the www. So in order to do that, we're going to create a second one. And we'll also self-signed, make it exportable. And in this case, for a, uh, we could do www.mastervs.com. We could use that. Uh, however, because I may want to use other subdomains for this also, we're going to do a wildcard certificate, mastervs, which is what that asterisk does. And that's also how the Azure websites.net uh, allows all subdomains under it to have HTTPS. So we'll go ahead and create one of those wildcard certificates. Again, we'll use the SHA1 make it 2048, same storage location, and again with the AKU. There we go. So now what we want to do is go over and look at those within our, um, well actually we have to export those and then upload those to Azure. So in order to export those, we're going to do a Windows run and we want to run MMC, which is Microsoft Management Console. And you'll probably get an administrative prompt to make sure that you're OK with using running that as an administrator. Let me just size this down so that you can see what I'm doing here. OK, so now you want to go to File and Add Remove Snap-in. We want to add in the Certificate Snap-in. Click on the Add button. Uh, from my user account. Remember back at the command line we had used the setting of my and that's what puts it into uh, this container. And then we'll just say OK. OK, so here's our certificates. And if we go to personal, we should have our two certificates that we just created, the master, the wildcard, star.mastervs.com and the mastervs.com. So we're going to go ahead and export both of those. So we'll click on All Tasks, Export. And we do want to export the private key in order to upload this to Azure. Uh, these defaults are OK, so we want it to be a PFX file and include all certificates in the path. You do, and we'll give it a password here.
and you want to give it a file. So I had exported these before, so I'll just overwrite those. This was the, which one are we on here? I believe we're on the basic one. So we'll do the master VS cert. We'll overwrite that. Next. And finish. Now we'll go to the wildcard, do the same thing. Export. We do want the private key. These defaults are fine. And once again, this one will go to the wildcard. So just save those to your desktop or somewhere easy to find, and then finish. OK, so now that we've got those exported, we can jump back over to Azure, upload those, and get our SSL certs all configured. All right, now that we've got our two uh, self-signed certificates ready to go, why don't we jump over, get these set up. So if we go down to the Configure tab, and we go to the certificates first. Now we need to upload our certificates first, obviously, before we assign them to the sites. So we're going to browse to the location where you saved your exported uh, PFX files. I've got mine here on the desktop. So this is the first one for the mastervs.com. You'll have to enter in your password. There's the first one. And this is the wildcard certificate, which allows me to use the www. That one's good. That one's good. OK, so now we've got these two um, SSL certs up on Azure for this website for these websites to use. However, they're not actually being used yet. The next step is to go down to the bindings. Here you're going to choose each of the domain names that you want to add a SSL cert to. So we'll start with the master VS choose the certificate. So we need to choose the root domain name one. And we do want to use the SNI, not the IP. The SNI SSL essentially allows multiple host headers, uh, for instance, um, mycompany.com and yourcompany.com, to both be hosted at the same IP address, uh, but use different SSL certificates. So choose your domain name for the second one. We're going to do the www site. And for this one, we need to choose the wildcard. And those two are all set. Now we're going to go click on Save. And it's saying that there may be additional charges for linking these. And there we go. That succeeded. So from the looks of things, if we go back to our dashboard, we pop open our site. Obviously, we've still got the Azure Websites site. And if we type in mastervs.com. Now you notice it went, last time we were there, we tried to go to the HTTPS and it was using the Azure site. Now we still get this, it is a self-signed certificate, so you do get this message about the certificate because it's not issued by a certificate authority that Azure or my browser, or really anyone's going to trust. It's really just off my local machine. So, but however, we do click on the continued website. Remember the, when we had looked at it previously, it was using the Azure websites.net certificate. And here you can see it's using the wildcard certificate that we've generated ourselves and assigned to the website. So that's the first one. And if we go over to Master VS, we get the same thing. Now remember, this wouldn't even come up last time because it is a root domain name. So it wouldn't have allowed us to use the Azure Websites uh, .NET SSL at all. So now we can get there. And when we jump over to the site, we can view that certificate. And you can see that is using our second certificate that we generated. So just to wrap up, we we're able to go ahead and assign our two SSL certificates to our site. One was a root domain for mastervs.com, and the other was a subdomain using a wildcard certificate for www.mastervs.com. And we were able to do that uh, after generating our own self-signed certificates using the Make Cert utility. And then we walked through kind of how we configured that on the site. So if you, I hope you enjoyed the video and, in, and liked watching. And if you did, please go ahead and like the video or subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you in the next video.